All right, guys, finally some end game content is out. And today we got chapter 13 hard mode. So I already went ahead and took out the first attempt. Pretty standard, pretty uh, not difficult, but uh, it was a lot of fun, I gotta say. It's been a while since I played super sweaty try hard mode using some neat fleet combos. But alas, the fun, fun uh, first try knocked it out. And that's all I gotta say. Very, very easy attempt. So. If you guys don't know, uh, difficult mob is about 128 is what you can see from chapter um, 13, 4 hard. And here is the fleet that I used for this run. So the mob fleet is fleet number 1 right here. And boss fleet is going to be fleet number 2. So let's go ahead and talk about this fleet in particular. So starting off with New Jersey. So New Jersey here might be pretty loud, sorry. Uh, New Jersey is here mainly because I want her cross bra. She has excellent uh, damage as well too. As well as good wave clear and just all around a really good ship to have. High anti air as well too. Very, very nice to bring for this uh, scenario. I equipped her with the fast gun. The 457. An anti-air auxiliary as well too. And an anti-air uh, gun as well too. You guys can use just the uh, bofers if you guys want to. These things right here. You don't have to use rainbows. But I just made rainbows because it looks fun. Uh, rainbow color means good, right? Stuff like that. And I ran a very fast oriented build. So... When it comes to mob setups and it's difficult content, you want to go for a very, very fast build right here. So I went fire control radar, fast gun. We want to pow, pow, pew, pew, very, very fast. The Percy is here, a very, very standard combo for anti-air. We have the Corsairs, which gives anti-air, and we have the Wyverns, which intercepts planes as well. And then we have a good anti-air, the UR. Just use the Bofors if you guys don't have them. And the standard double steam catapults. I would have used plus 13s, but I forgot. It's not a big deal though, plus 10s work just fine. As for Yorktown too, we have double Corsairs. You guys don't have to use double Corsairs though, but I use them because they're very fast planes and fast is good, like I said earlier. So more pirate squad squadrons, more, more anti-air control, very, very good. And then 10 riders are gonna be here, a little bit slow, but good, good damage, can't really go wrong with it. I have a homing beacon for speed and I have just a regular steam catapult, basic, basic build right there. Now Sila, I, I praise Sila a lot and I finally got to use her as some actual good content. Very, very good ship for this department. We have an anti-air light armor gun, the Seattle gun right here. Very, very good. We have a quintuple magnetic torpedo standard as well too. We have the rainbow UR once again. Uh, you guys don't have to use them. You can use whatever anti-air you guys want, like these if you want to. I think these are like pretty good as well too, so... But toss those on, go ahead and you do so. Make sure you guys have the high performance air radar. It's going to help you guys out a lot. 108 anti-air is very, very good. And then we have the um, washing machine. Just more evasion, more HP, more chances to survive. Can't go wrong with it. Kazagumo, she's a weird ship to pick here. But I picked this ship in particular because uh, I do need buff my Yorktown 2 and my Perseus. And I also need a DD slot as well too. Like I'm forced to pick one. Could have used Shimakaze, but might as well buff my backline. Maybe give them an extra heal as well, too, if they dip below a certain amount of HP. Again, can't go wrong with Kazuguma right here. Very, very nice slot to put in. And then Shimanto, very, very new ship. Uh, basically built her the same way as Sila. Because my Sila is ringed, though, she has more anti-air than the Shimanto, which means Sila's buff right here applies to my Shimanto as well, too. We're going to be extra, extra safe. For these uh, battles right here. So clean, clean setup. This is my mob setup right here. Uh, cat wise, I ran a lot of uh, Mountain Tenacity as well as a Vanguard cat as well, too. I don't know if it shows Mountain Tenacity. I don't know, have it on this fleet. I never mind, I lied. <laughs> but we went carriers and with some van and some light cruiser cats right here. And for my boss fleet, we're going a very good damage oriented build right here. Uh, this this fleet primar primarily focuses on doing damage as well as surviving. So we built Hakuryu and Shinano with Wyverns and Corsairs to cover for anti-air. And we have the Ten Rise for damage as well too. Very, very fast planes. I trust Shinano and um, Hakuryu are going to do a lot of damage as well too. So that's why I toss these ships on here. And she does, uh, Shinano does need a third IJN ship. Then we're going to use Musashi. Musashi covers for both the Hakuryu and Shinano, as well as big, big heavy armor damage with her gun on Taiho, which is the boss of 13-4. So I like this ship a lot. Has really good HP pool as well too. A very, very safe choice for this department. The only difference I changed right here is that we went to anti-air, um, anti-air, anti-air slot for this instead of damage power one or the Dido one. So 
Protection is very, very good here. Plymouth is here as, once again, damage buffs out Musashi as well too, and a little bit of anti-air as well too. Again, can't really bench Plymouth too good of a ship, so yeah. Helena, again, really good anti-air ship, gives a good buff, debuff, sorry, debuff as well too. So, and she has some good anti-air as well too in her kit somewhere, I think. If I'm mistaken, or somewhere in here. For evasion, I guess. A survivability, but yeah, still nice. And then Cheshire, gonna be the main tank, has some good anti-air, has some decent damage reduction. Solid ship right here, and you need a heavy cruiser slot, so I think that's the best slot to put right here. Otherwise, you guys can run more damage if you guys want to, but I went a little bit more safe on that department. The biggest damage dealers for this team is gonna be Musashi as well as Plymouth. Haku Ryu and Shinao are gonna be doing damage as well too, but they're also protecting me from the air as well too, with their Corsair and Wyvern build. Okay. So uh, that's the fleet. Um, some quick notes about this. If you guys haven't watched my World 14 guide video, go ahead and watch that for mechanics. I do use a lot of mechanics in this game. If you guys watch carefully, I play manual for this um, for this video. So you guys can watch how I play manually. Again, uh, depending on what kind of level mob you're going for, like one, two, three, um, there's going to be different waves amount. So if it's at level three, it's going to be three waves. Save your bursts. Don't throw all your barrages, airstrikes, and torpedoes out at once. Do like maybe two air strike, shoot a bit, wait for the next wave, launch your torpedoes, then shoot a bit, and then for the third wave, launch your uh, barrages with your battleship, and then whatever comes up first, torpedoes or air strikes, finish it off for the last wave, okay? Make sure you don't stack your um, burst and use it in increments, all right? And once again, I'm gonna use this mechanic in the video. If one of your Vanguard ship gets slow, in this case, my Shimanto is very, very low in this video, swap her out with someone that's more durable and has more health, in this case, I swapped her out with Sila near the end, and I made Shimanto go into the back and Sila into the front. This way, you get more value out of their health pool because if you guys don't know, the front slot takes more damage than the back line slot. So I'm going to put the one with the highest HP and more durable in the front and put the weaker one in the back so they're more safe. All right. So again, quick little mechanics. Um, again, watch my World 14 video as well too. That's all I got to say. Enjoy the video, guys. Good luck at farming at 13.4.
MVP ねご褒美
自由のために任せて自由のために自由のために
Oh, <laughs> 